employees that we have with both the city and the county. I appreciate that. Um, if we can move on then I think is to the next item, Madam Clerk. Item three, approval of April 2nd, 2014, Jado Board Meeting Minutes. We did receive an email earlier this afternoon from Lazone Gray, who was unable to be here tonight due to some health issues. He had asked for a change to the minutes. And uh, Madam Clerk, do you have that change that he had requested? Uh, yes, on page 16 um, in the bold italicized where it says Councilman, Councilman De La Isla moved to give Mr. Ledbetter an additional two minutes. It should say Mr. Gray an additional two minutes. So that was the only change that he had. Okay. And I would move, uh, having received that request, uh, Mr. Gray's that make that change to the minutes. Second. Okay. And if we have, we'll call on that. Amendment. Commissioner Bueller? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Archer? Aye. Mayor Wolgas? Yes. Deputy Mayor Everhart? Yes. Councilmember Hiller? Yes. Councilmember Schmidt? Yes. And this was mailed out in advance of tonight's meeting. Have all the rest of the members had an opportunity to review the minutes? Are there any other additions or corrections that the council, that the members see to the minutes? Motion to approve the uh, minutes of April 2nd, 2014 as amended. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Uh, before we vote there, I understand that there have been members that have, or citizens that have asked to speak. And is there? Uh, the first to speak, Carol Marple, followed by Joseph Ledbetter. but I have an amendment or an, a, a correction to make on the minutes. And what correction is that? Um, and I don't know the page number, okay. but it was the cost of the house that go to Pika bought. It said $21,000. It was actually $221,250. That would be on page seven in the middle or page 10 of 68 on the side. And that is near the lower half of that paragraph, that page. And so your requested correction to that, yes. as to your comment would be that it would be, again? $221,250. Okay. And was there any other additions or corrections that you saw? Um, I just wanted to make some statements about the minutes. Okay. Is this the correct time to do it? I think that it would be, yes. Okay. Um, after the discussion on awarding Yanta some money, which was $100,000 that we m might give them for incentive, I wanted to do some research on the company. And I spent approximately two hours doing research but, and I think that, that this comment might actually fall better under public comment. And I'm, okay. not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not apologizing. I'm not meaning to cut you off. But no, that's fine. I didn't I, know where yeah. it belonged. I think that that comment probably falls better under public comment rather than okay. it's something substantive to the minutes that needs to be changed or corrected. Uh, if there's an incorrect statement, does that fit there? Um, it would be as if a, per, if a member made an incorrect statement. Okay, I'll wait till the public comments. Thank you. Thank you. And, but we've noted that you have a correction that you wish to make to the minutes, and we can take that up. Uh, so moved. There's been a motion by Karen, H Councilwoman Karen Hiller, to make that correction to the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Bueller. If we can. I have a point of information. Maybe yes. If I can. Where did the number come from? We we're changing it from twenty one thousand to two twenty one two fifty. Is that right? That is that a, a valid number? Where I mean, where? Uh, that came off the website. Okay. Why is it that? I, and, and Commissioner Archer, I believe that the representation was that was what was meant to have said, or that she had said. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, the only thing I would point out is the minutes are supposed to reflect what was said. 
and, and we're confident that's the number that she said. That doesn't mean that you should, after the fact, correct the minutes so that a, a statement now changes. Um, okay. We're confident the minutes are correct and that, they, that she said $21,000. So having given that information from our legal counsel that uh, if the clerk is confident that, that was said at 21,000 as opposed to a different number, uh, there was a motion to amend and a second. Um, does that change you either motion or second? I, I think I can see how speaking that number could have been misunderstood and if the speaker thought that she had said the bigger number, I'd just as soon have the minutes reflect the correct number. So I'm fine with the amendment. Okay. Then if we could take a roll call vote on that then. Commissioner Bueller? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Archer? No. Mayor Wolgat? Yes. Deputy Mayor Everhart? Yes. Councilmember Hiller? Yes. Councilmember Schmidt? Yes. Okay. The next speaker is Mr. Ledbetter. <coughs> Uh, Joseph Ledbetter, uh, citizen of uh, the county and uh, business owner in the city, uh, law firm. Uh, <clears throat> I want to go to uh, concerns I have about the uh, minutes because I'm not sure they accurately reflect uh, what happened in the meeting. It, this all concerns item number four, uh, possible action, response request for proposal for economic development services contractor selection, contract approval of a three-year contract, multi-year contract, I might add. Uh, the first paragraph I want to note uh, on the record uh, talks about uh, what Rich Eckert said. He said that they have released an RFP and it's been widely published and you can read that and I believe that is accurate based on cores I filed with them showing that uh, including uh, even across state lines, one of these uh, RFPs was sent out. <clears throat> um, the next page, number three, uh, we get into uh, discussing the RFP and whether uh, there's an awardee of the RFP, uh, although those words are not used, those are the proper words, I've been told, by people that do a lot of these RFPs and have a lot of experience in them. Um, I'm going to the paragraph about the fourth, fifth one down, Commissioner Cook. Commissioner Cook asks if there are any other questions or comments on Go Topeka. Seeing none, he asked Mr. Eckert, legal counsel, uh, would it be his recommendation to make a motion to accept the RFP and then go into ne contract negotiations regarding the term of the recipient or all is one action? Mr. Eckert indicated it would be up to the board but from a parliamentary standpoint, they should probably do one thing at a time. Uh, then he goes on into a redlined contract and a contract instead of discussing and getting a vote on the RFP. What the, what the minutes reflect, unless he's changed his mind about how he answered the question, was that we never voted on accepting the RFP from Go Topeka. And I want the record to clearly reflect that. It has not been accepted nor voted on and I believe that raises a significant legal issue uh, and I certainly am willing to see if the uh, county councilor changes mind and says we should perhaps vote on that RFP even tonight okay. again these are the minutes the discussion should be about whether the minutes are accurate so noted <clears throat> See non-responsive. Okay. Uh, I don't know what to do with this, but uh, anyway, that's that's what I had for that. Thank you. Thank you. Noting for the record, the purpose is of tonight for the review of the minutes that there are no other changes or corrections to the minutes, and it, there has been a motion and a second to approve the minutes um, with a second uh, motion change. Uh, I think that brings us to voting on the move minutes and for a roll call vote for approval. Commissioner Bueller? 
Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Archer? Aye. Mayor Wolgat? Yes. Deputy Mayor Everhart? Yes. Council Member Hiller? Yes. Council Member Schmidt? Yes. Our next item then? Item four, JADO first quarter cash statement and project spreadsheet. Good evening, uh, I'm Betty evening. Greiner, the financial administrator for Shawnee County. I'm uh, <coughs> here as treasurer of the JADO Finance Committee and uh, have our cash statement for the first quarter of 2014. As you can, uh, as in the packet and on the screen, you can see the uh, receipts for the first quarter of the year were $4,069,000 of that Two million two hundred and four thousand were sales tax receipts for the city of Topeka, and one million eight hundred and sixty-four thousand was sales tax receipts for Shawnee County. We then go down and show the payments that came out of the bank account to the city of Topeka. We made a payment for the Topeka Boulevard Bridge debt service payment in the amount of three million four hundred and seventy thousand. I'm sorry, three million four hundred. I'll say it again, <laughs> try one more time. <laughs> 3240000 To Shawnee County, we made a payment of $1,500,000 for the county bridges. That's an annual payment. And then we uh, made a payment also to the Shawnee County for the 45th Street project from Adams to California in the amount of 790000 there was also payments to go to PICA um, on the, their monthly payments, the publication expense for the RFP, and then bank charges. So our total payments totaled 6,782,000. This leaves us a balance at the end of March <coughs> of $4,185,271.68. We happy to answer any questions you have on this statement. This is a cash statement. Are there any questions for Ms. Greiner regarding this first quarter cash statement? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor Wolgat. Uh, and this is not specifically on here, but more an informational question if, if you would know. Do you know how many more payments we have on the Topeka Boulevard Bridge? That will be, as I understand, well, I, I don't know. Okay. I, I hate, to, I to, think, I hate it, to respond when I'm not certain. Okay, it is about through 16, I believe. I think it goes. It was it was bonded to go through the entire um, period. And, and there again, I'm, I'm not okay. certain, so I, right. I hate to give a, right. a definite answer on that. I might get back that. to you on that. It's something we might. And I would and be see. happy to get back with you and let oh, you know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Other questions for our audit finance director and report on the cash basis. Seeing none, uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, also we have uh, provided for you a statement on the, uh, the road projects. This shows each of the road projects, the, the years, the cash flow for the um, expenditures on those projects. You can, as you look here, the, the red on the, over here on the side says final as constructed co amount. That is, these, those projects have been completed and those are the final costs on those projects. As you look at these spreadsheets, um, the top items are all projects that were um, handled by the county, the top, the first two pages, and then the third page are city projects. Um, you can see the total on the bottom of the third page is the total per year that was spent on these projects, and then the total that we estimate will be spent um, through the year of 2016. Tom Vlock is also here if you have any questions on, the, on any of these projects. I know that this is a lot of information that is put into a very uh, <laughs> condensed form. Um, if we wanted to go back to this later at a later time and look at it, or if the public wants to go back and look at this at a later time, do you know where those are accessible at or where, how they would be able to look at those or examine those records? Well, I, it will be as part of the agenda packet for JADO. Okay. 
Um, we could also put it on the, the county website if you would want us to. I think that would be helpful. Um, you know, I would, looking at around, I'm seeing nods of heads. I think that would be helpful. I know that oftentimes I read the comments through newspaper articles, and one of the reoccurring comments that tends to appear is, I don't know where my money went. I know that they went and did a lot of things, but I have no idea how the money went. And a spreadsheet like this mm -hmm. breaks it down in a very user, you know, it's very usable and you can see exactly how the money, what projects were handled and when they were handled and what the costs were. But I think that would be good to have it on the county website. Yeah, we have there are other that. comments for Ms. Greiner? Councilwoman Hiller? Only that um, this format I think has been used since this tax started and I yes. really like it. I, I concur with Chairman Cook, I, I just think that it's a, it's a good way. I mean, we've had all street projects this time. We're contemplating doing some different things in the future, but laying them out in this full timeline and full disclosure of the pieces has always been really helpful. And periodically, when there was a need to change something, it's been helpful because you could see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments for Ms. Greiner tonight regarding the spreadsheet? none. Thank you very much. Next item, Madam Clerk. Item 5, overview of first quarter report, first quarter financials, and second quarter initiatives. Good evening. I'm Doug Kinsinger, your president of Go Topeka. Uh, tonight we're going to try and give you just a couple of highlights. We've agreed to keep this brief and focus on the things we think are most newsworthy for you. So uh, let me cover just a couple of items and then subsequent Brad Owen from Mize Houser, who is our accounting counsel or does uh, our accounting for Go Topeka will be here and kind of cover some of the highlights for this quarter's financials. As we're required by contract, we provide you those financials on a quarterly basis and those are posted on the website. But since it's kind of a quarterly basis, Brad will be here tonight and kind of walk through some of those significant issues in the financial statements. Following that, Molly Howie will cover some of our new market attraction uh, most important items. Joe Feldman will cover our existing business retention and expansion and workforce issues. Glenda Washington will cover some of our minority and small business activities. And then Scott Smathers will take clean up and see if there are any questions at the end. So let me cover just a couple of things before we turn it over to Brad. First of all, you know, we talked to you about air service before. I just want to report to you that United Air Service and Topeka's acceptance or supporting of that in our market is growing every month. As we all know, January, February was kind of a hard time to start as that was some of the coldest weather we had seen in the Midwest and some of the most flight cancellations we'd had uh, in the airline industry for <coughs> over 20 years. And we were subjected to the same problems that you saw around the nation. But every month starting since January, our boardings have been improving every month while May is starting to do very well and we're early in the month already. So we just want to remind the Topeka public and people in our region that we have two flights a day out of Topeka on United, one flight at 6 a.m. departing, one flight at uh, 3.45 departing, flights returning from Chicago here, both, both of our departing flights go to Chicago, the returning flights from Chicago leave at 1 and also at 8.30 in the evening. Our flights are kind of priced in the same model, pricing structure as they are out of Kansas City, so they're very competitive, and our parking is a bargain. It's $5 for as long as you want. So. The other item I would report to you, you've heard us talk about the water and sewer extensions out at Condo Fire <coughs> Commerce Park. Those are coming close to completion. If you recall, you allowed us to pay for all of those last year. We negotiated and got a better price by negotiating one contract instead of separating that. We saved uh, quite a few dollars doing that. But it will finish around the second week in June. The water and sewer extensions, the gas extensions have already finished. So we will have water, sewer, and gas to, uh, we believe, pretty much all of the area uh, west, southwest in the Kanza Fire Park for the first phase of uh, Mars Chocolate. So if you see where the new Innovation Parkway is, and you're going to describe the progress on that a little bit later tonight, uh, we've gone around that road into the west side of the property, and that'll be done in two weeks. So I'm going to turn it over now to Brad Owen, who'll give you a few highlights on the financial statements that I believe are in your packets also. So Brad Owen, please. 
Good evening. Good evening, Brett. Good evening. I might uh, refer, you, refer you to page 50 in your packets. <clears throat> I believe you have all three months of the first quarter, but I think I'll focus on March. Uh, page 50 is a statement of uh, receipts and disbursements. Uh, these are a modified cash basis, so um, you will see on that page a month actual and budget, and you'll see a year to date actual and budget. I'm going to focus on that year to date uh, set of columns to the right. Uh, the largest uh, expenditures for the quarter related to the utility extensions that Doug referred to, about $383,000. For those utility extensions so far. Uh, we also had a payment uh, to the Mars escrow account of about $159,000 uh, and that relates to uh, partial funding of the employment incentives. If you look down the list of program expenses you'll see that uh, we're, we're below budget on those program activities. Uh, new business attraction which is uh, the largest uh, program expenditure so far. Uh, really, uh, the activities were s below budget because uh, the staff spent quite a bit of time responding to the RFP uh, for economic uh, development services. So uh, there's still work to do there, but some of it was deferred into the second quarter. And the staff tells me that there's a lot of activity in the second quarter. So uh, we'll probably see more expenditures in that quarter. Uh, also in new business attraction, about $34,000 was paid up front for advertising for two, 2014. Uh, there were some discounts that were realized uh, for paying for, for all those ads up front. Uh, they also uh, bought a Swift site database license fee, which is about $10,000. So those were the significant uh, expenses in that quarter. Business retention, uh, really the staff's been busy in that area, but you can see again below budget, uh, there was really not any requirement to incur additional costs for special events or activities. So uh, those may well occur uh, later in the year. Workforce development, uh, again, a uh, budget variance uh, of just over 50,000. There was a uh, scholarship payment that was budgeted to occur in the first quarter uh, of 50000 to Washburn Tech, and that did not occur till April. So you'll see that uh, coming through the second quarter. The research area, um, again, Go Topeka was able to get a discount on labor market uh, data by paying uh, the bill for 2014 at the end of 2013. And so uh, while we budgeted that $10,000 uh, $10, payment uh, for the first quarter, it's likely that that will occur at the end of 2014 for the next year. Uh, and the discount there was considerable, so it was worth the accelerated payment. Uh, under the entrepreneurial and minority business development area, uh, expenses uh, ran below budget for the quarter as uh, the staff is working on a strategic plan for that area. So uh, some of the training, there, there was a little bit of training payment in the first quarter, but most of that will happen uh, later. The Small Business Innovation Center, again, the staff is working to develop the new program initiatives uh, for that. For, for the entrepreneurial support activity, so uh, we fully expect that money to go out, but again, it will be later in the year. And then uh, a smaller item, other program revenue. Um, you can see it's well ahead of budget for the first quarter. Uh, Go to Peak actually received crop payments in January, uh, and the budget's more of a straight line budget for that item, so. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions for Brad? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay, good evening. I'm going to just touch on a few numbers that are actually in your packet, so I'm not going to read through everything. But um, you can see that some of the highlighted numbers on your on your screen there and in your packet. Um, Doug already all, already mentioned um, the marketing of air service, and of course that's an awesome asset for us to have as we go out and market Topeka. That's one of the things that's showing up on those RFPs that we receive is how close are the airports and do they offer commercial service. So that's one thing that we're actually able to say yes on, and we like to um, brag about that a little bit. The infrastructure um, and concept fire moving right along should be done mid um, summer. And then another thing that, oh, sorry. Um, you all know we've worked really hard to respond to your RFP in quarter one. So that really did take a lot of our time. But, um, you know, it was a positive because it let us kind of look at our program of work and um, evaluate things when we really weren't planning on doing that at that time. But um, it was a great, a great activity for the staff. So quarter two, we have been hitting the road hard and out there building those relationships, talking to the consultants and the companies that have active projects in hand. Um, as a result of that activity, we had nine new projects already in quarter two, and that's quite a bit for um, one quarter. Those are pretty much all over the board, a lot of manufacturing, some back office customer service and things like that. Website redesign, you've heard us talk that we're going to be redesigning the website we're just about to start really kind of digging in. We've evaluated some of our peers' websites and kind of gotten an idea of what we want to do, but we hope to have a preliminary plan in quarter three that um, outlines everything that we're going to do for that. And then the retail infill analysis, we acquired those databases and have actually had some individuals coming in and asking questions, and we've been able to provide them information about how to um, best market those properties that are empty. So. Um, spread the word, tell people that we have that resource, and we'd like them to come in and ask more questions about that. Let's see. Really, Doug already covered the, the other two things that I was going to talk about, so I'm actually done, unless you guys have any other questions. Are there any questions regarding new business attraction? Councilwoman Hiller? Molly, I'm, I'm really pleased to hear about the retail infill. on uh, something I've been encouraging. Yeah. Uh, to see develop, but I wasn't aware that you've gotten the software and that you were doing it. What efforts have you made to let people know that you're now in that business, and who do they talk to? You know, um, to my knowledge, we haven't really publicized. Scott, have we publicized? We haven't publicized that we have that resource, okay. so um, we'd be open to other ideas of, of how we can do that. Um, I don't, you know, it's on our on our website, but. Um, do you have any ideas for how we could get that word out better? If I may. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, if you recall, well, I don't know that you were on the staff yet, but we did about in, in a kind of a broad-based downtown-oriented partnership, put together the, the booklet of all the economic development yeah, incentives I know what you're about. for downtown, mm -hmm. for businesses, both sure. on the building side and historic preservation side as well as, uh, as the other now I guess it's been three years ago mm -hmm. and then go to Pika put helped in partnership put together a seminar in that case downtown mm -hmm. and invited all the p potential stakeholders it really went well and it established those tools and that process in go to Pika I would think when you were ready something similar where, where the retail infill comes in is on the neighborhood basis we hear about I mean you do have a focus for East Topeka there are little pockets all over. I know Councilman Manspeaker's been interested in doing stuff in his district along the, the arteries. I certainly have some districts. If you could put together something at some point and just invite everyone who's interested in how to do that, it could be great. Sure, that's a great idea. Okay, well, we'll get back with you and hopefully have something set up to do that. I, I don't think it has to be a rush, but it would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Hiller. Are there any other comments for new business attraction? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you. All right, I think I'm on the right slide here. Um, I'm going to just give you some, uh, like Molly did, just some highlights, not necessarily read point for point from the slides. Um, 
I, what you see up on the screen are our first quarter results, and I, I, I put on there Yantra Services expands in Topeka. Um, that was a great uh, announcement that we were able to, and you supported uh, through an incentive offering to that company. Um, very high tech, very um, high level uh, positions that are being created in that company, so it's great that uh, Jado and, and Go Topeka could support them on that. Under general support, you'll just see some of the activity that took place. This is the core of my program, which is existing business, and that is being out there working with our businesses uh, on a daily and sometimes hourly basis. So that gives you kind of an overview of, of what's taken place there. Um, also, in the first quarter, we started uh, with an MTech training class. I did report that to you um, at the end of last year, telling you a little bit of what that is, which was the food manufacturers coming together and saying we need some core skills to be taught to some of our entry level positions and so we started working on that and I'll report to you some of the second quarter uh, developments off that but that program is well off the ground. What's fun from that is three of our additional manufacturers, both uh, large and medium sized manufacturers said hey, you know, we could really use this as well. And so again, we brought all of our partners together and I'll, I'll report further on that as we move forward. So um, the last bulleted item there was manufacturers in the classroom. That kind of spun out of a committee um, for manufacturing groups that just really never really quite got off the ground. Their core focus was getting in the classroom to start educating students about those careers. And so it started into development and as we move to the next slide, um, once again, uh, I'll talk to you, existing businesses I mentioned earlier, that's the core of my program is really being out there with those businesses and we'll continue working and are working some of those existing projects as well as the new ones that have come on board in the first quarter. And then we just uh, recently completed uh, as part of our second quarter going to Reesers corporate headquarters in Portland, Oregon. We were actually there last week. Uh, Kevin, you joined us and we were yes. pleased to have you. He was really a value add to our meeting there and uh, we learned lots of really good information. Very excited about what Reesers has and, and all of you have noticed the investment in, in East Topeka over there, so we're thrilled. Um, moving on to workforce development, this MTech training class. I've mentioned here that we have three manufacturers that are, are developing and in development of the second program. We were actually able to get some additional state funds to help scholarship students that are wanting to go into that course just as we did with the food manufacturers. Um, we will be meeting on the 22nd to start ferreting through all that curriculum to make sure that it's well groomed for these additional other manufacturers that aren't necessarily in the food manufacturing area. So we're thrilled about that and I'll continue to report that to you in our next meeting. Uh, manufacturers in the classroom. We spent a lot of time developing slides. We're presenting to high school students that will move into uh, both junior high and elementary as this program fully develops. Uh, nine of those manufacturers said, we want to be in the classroom with you. We want to tell the students about the great things and so that is moving forward. Uh, we had our first presentation to Auburn Washburn. Brenda, Dr. Brenda Dietrich has been very instrumental in helping me get that program off the ground and then of course our partners with the businesses are just spot on. They're 100% they're behind this whole program. Um, moving along to the scholarship uh, program launch, um, as part of uh, Go Topeka's uh, and defined in Go Topeka's strategic plan, uh, we made the announcement of that $50,000 $50, scholarship program. Uh, what's great about that program is it is going to assist not only uh, new students but existing students that are already in those high demand career uh, programs and so uh, we're thrilled and I know that a lot of the students that are embarking in some of those careers are thrilled to have that additional assistance uh, to move through those programs. So. Um, it, what we're expecting as far as the number of students in aid is about 75 students will actually experience some benefit from that scholarship. And again, um, I'd be happy to share with you all the different categories under those high demand, high wage careers as we move forward. Um, and the, the last item on there is the Youth Project Initiative. 
Um, this board brought up uh, what can you do to help some of our youth in Topeka and so we started um, holding some meetings and what we found out is there's a lot of programs out there and a lot of those programs aren't necessarily talking to each other about some of the things that are happening and so what we've decided after several meetings is that the Community Resource Council is actually going to take the lead position on this particular program. Uh, they're going to kind of <coughs> consolidate and understand exactly what's happening in the community and then go to Pika uh, and staff will start to meet and determine are there gaps that maybe we can help fill. And so that's still very much under development and hopefully we'll have more to report to you at our next uh, council meeting. So are there any questions? Any questions regarding existing business development? Councilman Schmidt. Thank you, Joe. Um, on the the Yantra services yes. expansion, mm -hmm. I know, I believe it was the last meeting where we went over the incentive package yes. um, for there. And and that was, it was staggered or it was, it was tiered. Mm -hmm. They could get more incentives, more for the more higher expansion. The wages, yes. Can you give any details of, of how they've gone with that? Is Are they at, at the minimum or the maximum of the well, that incentive. that incentive contract is performance based, and so what what we do is we look at it. We're always a year behind. Okay, so they have this year to perform. So in 2015, we will look at their employment levels, mm -hmm. and we'll make a determination what those those wages are. We will use uh, their state employment reports to determine uh, how that incentive is paid out. That incentive is set up to pay one tenth. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll pay them if it's five thousand dollars a job, they'll get five hundred dollars a job, and that will carry out for a ten-year period. Okay. Does that answer your question? That does. I just, I just wanted to to see how the I was interested in the structure of that incentive program, and to see you know if it's something that maybe we we would want to expand or or more aggressively pursue. But thank you. Yeah, bet. Yeah, all of our incentives for. The are performance based and so they have that year to perform and then we measure we're always a year behind on that measurement period so thank you thank you are there other yeah. Anybody Mr. Else? Chairman, yes. yes on your m tech uh, training classes yes um, how many students are involved and is that and tell about the location of oh, where that's held. absolutely absolutely um, the m tech is of course the five food manufacturers that that wanted this program started to date we've had 37 enrolled okay, in that good. class and uh, six have actually been hired by companies inside mm -hmm. Topeka and so it is held where? it is held at Washburn Tech yeah. over on Huntoon right. I'm sorry right yes. good yes and I just comment that uh, uh, Commissioner Cook and I were there for the uh, the program launch a scholarship and a very very important program and also I strongly support your, your youth pro project initiative and very interested in seeing how that can be developed I and uh, I think there's there's a need there and a lot of it as you say is a communication that we need to help get these groups together so that we know what's going on and how we can be helpful absolutely thank you thank you for the other comments councilwoman pillar question about MTech and the youth project initiative really any of them we have had some pretty strong statistics shared with us and some pretty com compelling comments mm -hmm. about affirmatively working toward getting minorities into these programs particularly men are there any affirmative elements to recruiting to these new programs uh, sure um, I will tell you that uh, when we developed that program, we worked with each company to really define what are the criteria, mainly what can't you hire with the background. Uh -huh. And so what we did was we utilized the Workforce Center. At that time, uh, Gina uh, was with the Workforce Center. She has since left, so we have a new uh, individual that we're working with over there. But they're actually going through those candidates and screening to make sure none of those backgrounds will kick them out from ever having any opportunity to work. Because companies require, I mean, there's certain backgrounds that companies just simply won't hire from. And so we're using the Workforce Center to draw those candidates into that program and to make those recommendations and moving. Now, that doesn't mean that if 
an individual hears about that program and goes straight to, you know, Worshiper and Tech that they can't enroll in it, but that individual is then referred to the Workforce Center to get that background done before we go, we don't want to send students through the class and then have them find out that they're not going to qualify for employment. So to, that was a long way of answering a question as far as any affirmative, I would assume that we have that done, but that's something I can certainly check on for you, Karen. I, I would encourage, and, okay. and particularly with the Youth Project Initiative, to, to reach out to our young people when they're just getting into, just facing the prospect of that workplace and getting them hooked in, I think, is, is important. I agree. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments regarding existing businesses? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So I'm going to give you a brief update on everything that we're doing at uh, Go Topeka in reference to EMBD, the, the Entrepreneur Minority Business Development Department. We've been, and a lot of you have heard this before, but we've been aggressively um, attacking this makerspace co-work space opportunity because we think that is the value added to the community. So what we've done was we began working on a business plan that will probably uh, be used as a tool to go out and help us identify uh, possible sponsors to help us fund this event, uh, I mean this activity. Uh, we also are looking at a site. We have our eyes on a site, a building on Kansas Avenue. It is out of construction at the moment, but we know that it will be in construction. But we feel confident that even though it's going to be in the line of construction, that it's a needed um, commodity for the community and they will embrace it. Also, we're looking at funding opportunities. So we're building a, a piece that we can take out and um, solicit for funding to support the uh, Makerspace co-work space. It is coming online and coming on fast. People across the whole um, community are hearing it. It is a buzzword, and I'm really embracing it. I'm loving that opportunity. We're looking too at, um, we looked at the loan fund, and I think the first night that I came, I told you the loan fund just didn't have enough power in it that we needed to kind of beef it up a little bit. And so what we did was the loan committee got together and they said, you know, you, you know, this is absolutely right. We need to be able to provide the monies that the individuals need to grow. And so we beat up the loan fund. The loan fund uh, during first quarter, we, we decided that if we, if we had the person that had the capacity for, for the lending, we would loan them up to $100,000. And then we also increased the line of credit up to $15,000. So we are looking at that as a great opportunity for the community. There are a lot of things coming on. Uh, we are looking at how we can use this money to work projects out of the 501 um, piece to see if that will support us. And we'll talk to you a little more about that later on, but we're looking at a lot of opportunities to, to beef up this, this uh, lending uh, of this loan fund project. And 20, the, uh, the, I talked to you a little bit when I first came too about procurement and opportunities to do business with the state, federal, and local government. So what we done during the first quarter was we looked at opportunities to plan a conference. So in the fall in October, we'll be planning a procurement conference and we're inviting uh, buyers from all over the state and uh, it's gonna be an open uh, opportunity for them to come in um, for the small businesses to take a look at what opportunity they, they can bid on and uh, in the interim, we're doing training on how to get certified to do business with these uh, government agencies, what you need to do, um, what, you, what sites you need to go on. We're bringing uh, the PTAC person down from Wichita and he and she um, there are two of them are helping us get our people ready for this opportunity. So we're pre-planning this conference. Also, uh, for community involvement, been very involved in a lot of activities. One that I'm embracing this week finally is the Sum Sumner Legacy uh, Brown versus Board of Education Group. And so we are doing a number of things this week as a result of us planning through the first quarter. So I'm really excited about that. <coughs> Upcoming second quarter, we've been really, really busy. Uh, what I really wanted to do was find out where the gaps were in the marketplace. So I told you all I was going to do the survey. We finally did the survey. The results are back, and we're kind of putting it all together. So what you will hear in the next report is the results of the survey. I'll be, uh, it'll be out and about. People will be hearing a little bit about it, but I would like for you all to know what the results are, where the gaps are, and how we're going to address those gaps in the market. 
uh, loan fund, uh, I'm sorry, Ice House, uh, we graduated 34 people out of the Ice House child care class, uh, the new venture class, there were 34 people that graduated last, um, two weeks ago. And so we're really excited about that. Out of those 34 people that we graduated, I think four of them have started a business. So two, two service firms and two uh, retail firms have already started, uh, uh, enterprises have already started. Small Business Awards, I want to thank you all for what you did yesterday. It made that day very special to a number of people. So thank you for being there. Small Business Awards, um, we had a total of 200 and probably 85 people there, uh, which was really a large group, but we were very, very pleased with the outcome. The Women's Initiative, we've started that um, in April. We kicked it off the second quarter again, and uh, in the fall we will have a women's conference. More to come on that. We are putting together what the skeleton is going to look like, um, how we're going to address some of the issues uh, of women in the marketplace and women that are business owners. So we'll be working towards that. We've done a number of uh, community outreach opportunities, and uh, we'll explain some of those in detail at our next uh, JADO meeting uh, because they happen set next quarter, at the end of this quarter. And then procurement initiatives. As I said, we are very aggressively involved in that procurement initiative. We think that the growth of the community, of the small business community, has a lot to do with how we grow our, our small businesses. And so what, we, um, what we're going to do with this procurement initiative is we're looking at working with 501 on this new bond issue to see what we can do to get them some micro enterprises and some small businesses to start doing business with them. And so we met with them today. That's a part of what we're doing is planning that strategy of how we can reach out to 501, help them market the training that they're going to do for these small businesses to show them how to, you know, what it is that they need, what kind of forms, applications they need to be certified to do business with them. And so that is where we are on that. And I'm really excited about that opportunity because uh, just before I came in, I talked to Scott about you know, what if we do this? What if we do that? And he was like, sounds good. So I'm, I'm <laughs> uh, you know, Alice is right to check, Scott, no. But we are really enjoying, um, you know, what's happening in this community. It is Small Business Week. I want you all to celebrate, go out, and support a small business. Thank you so much. Are there questions for the EMBD section? Councilwoman Heller. I want to draw her out. Yesterday's luncheon really was fabulous, one it of my is. favorite times of the year. But you had uh, mm -hmm. Dean Sollers from Washburn make an announcement yes. that I'd like to have you share with Scott. Well, well uh, there is a new department, an entrepreneur department, that is going to be launched at uh, Washburn University. And we are so excited. We'll be working with them in any way we possibly can. But um, it, it, it tells you the synergy and the energy that's mm -hmm. going on in this community around small business. I think that you know, finally we're embracing what, you know, what, what really drives our community. So I'm excited about that. We will be working with Washburn. They have uh, Rick Lejeune is going to be the leader of that, that initiative, but he is, he is all, ca all capable, and you'll see him going and coming and, and us doing things together. So we're really excited about that, that piece. So that just speaks to where we are. We are, we are a small business centric at the moment. And you so. might add that the sold out lunch. Oh, sold out <laughs> luncheon. Thank you. Thank you. So, are there any other questions or comments for EMBD? Thank you, Glenda, very Thank much. Thank you. My pleasure. Good evening. I'm Scott Smathers with Go Topeka. Uh, I'm just going to give you a couple things. You've already been kind of asking questions of people as they go along, so that makes my job really easy for the, for the meeting tonight. Uh, I wanted to fill you in on a theme to start with. We had another meeting with them today. Uh, job fairs looking to be July 17th from 9 to 3. We'll be marketing that and letting companies know about it. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a lot of companies involved as far as that goes and, and uh, help those people. They have been already having some people go to other companies. So uh, that, that, that's good news, but we definitely need to take care of the rest that are still there. Uh, as you can see, Real quick, as you can see by uh, the presentations and, and what you've heard, I guess, going on, you can tell that we've been very focused on the strategic plan that was established. We're going to continue to operate going down that road. Uh, as, you, you know, as, as, as you all helped us define back in November and December, this is what we're really focusing on, and we will continue to do so. That doesn't mean that there won't be 
exceptions. I mean, we have people from the community that have thrown out ideas or given us some thoughts that we need to work on, and we will be factoring those in. But at the same time, the strategic plan is really where we're going, and we intend to keep following that roadmap until you all say we want to change the strategic plan. So uh, I just wanted to leave you with that and answer any other questions. Excuse me. Answer any other questions you may have. Scott, I might have one to start. Regardless of whether we have voting members or non-voting members, mm -hmm. members of the council, or maybe just a public at large, if there's a person who has an idea for how to grow economic development in Shawnee County, is the door open to go to Sure, Pika? sure. I mean, we're always open to listening to what, what ideas you have. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like everything else. There are always resource limitations associated that might come into play, but that doesn't mean that we don't want to hear about it. And just because we don't necessarily or aren't able maybe to get on it immediately doesn't mean that it's not going on our list that we need to definitely consider and move forward to uh, as we continue to proceed doing economic development. And then would it also be a fair statement that a lot of these new programs that we've heard about tonight, things that we've seen over the last uh, the beginning of the year are reflections of the decisions that we made on the budget last year. Absolutely. Uh, and, and a lot of it was based off of your input that the JADO board gave us in regards to how do you want us to move forward and, and what you want us to focus on. So, absolutely. Are there other questions or comments for Scott? Yes, Mayor Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at one of our um, town hall meetings, and actually it was not in a public, but after the meeting, after the public meeting ended, um, a person came up and there was a group talking and they were asking about um, what our current average wage when we try to get companies here what is that um, and I know it's listed on page four uh, but I would like for you to just talk about that a little bit if, and and I think is this are we at the level of most communities in our area um, what you know, what do we expect? What is our average a average wage? And when we are uh, looking at companies, what do we hope that they would be also paying? Sure. If that, if that, that makes sense. That's a fair question. Um, it, and, and unfortunately, it does vary somewhat by the type of business that's coming in. So that, that does have an impact on what we look for. As a community for the state of Kansas, we are higher than many of the areas as far as our average wage goes. We normally will look, though, um, from an incentive point of view, we normally would prefer that companies look at a, at least around $15 or more an hour, so a little over $30,000 a year. We also definitely look at benefits associated with it when we're, when we're looking at companies. It doesn't mean that that is a, a, a rock-hard rule by any means, but we kind of ramp it up from there. Uh, have we ever given incentives to companies that pay less than $15 an hour? Sure. Would we consider it? Possibly it depends on uh, a lot of factors that come into play and, and once again, the type of industry, uh, whether it's um, uh, how many people we're talking about and, and a lot of other factors that come in, whether it's a target industry that we're focusing on or, or whatever. But normally I'd say at a minimum we're looking at about $15 an hour and then we ramp up our incentives as they increase from there. And with the, if I may, yes, with the um, benefits then that's like a 35000 40 Sure. I mean, I, it says normally I, can run anywhere. I mean, our average wage is probably closer to about 19 or 20 in the market as far yeah. as what that's doing. I mean, when, when I was talking about what our uh, kind of our, our lower threshold is that we look for as far as incentives, but our average wage is probably closer to about 19 to 20. Uh, when you look at benefits, that can easily add another 30 to 40 percent on top of a, a job for benefits associated with it. And, and if that and that is com comparable to other communities in Kansas Midwest uh, when they're in the same business that you're in I, I would say it, 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 it really probably varies by community to be honest with you a lot of communities um, so much of it depends on what their existing market is for our market where our average wage is about 19 to 20 that's where we'd be at if our average wage was more around you know 13 or 12, it'd be lower. If our average wage was 25 or 30, it would be higher. So it, it really depends as you go by market uh, where they would be. But, but for our market, it's a pretty good fit, I believe. Okay, that's, that's good. That's very helpful to hear. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Scott? Councilman Schmidt. Thank you. Scott, um, I've expressed this last year in, in some of the meetings. I'm very interested in the 
and this may be a question for Glenda too, um, <coughs> on the, the procurement side of things. And from, from how I understand the program, we're, we're looking at um, expanding the ability of, of people who produce things here locally uh, to get their product out to state governments, to other industries that work here, uh, and, and we're promoting that. Is there also an element of, of promoting to the larger industries that, he, that are here to source locally um, their products? Sort yes, of like sir. a directory. Yes, sir. And I, I, I mean, I agree, but we've, we've talked about it. Uh, yes, sir. We've talked, and, and Joe and Glenda are actually working together on some of that as well, as, and, and that will be part of the fall, fall okay. as well. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Scott? All right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments regarding the presentation from Gotapika for the first quarter in general? that we haven't covered. 